Hello everybody, this is Simeonski again and today I'm going to show you the second part of my game creation tutorial kind of and this will show you how to use enemy, sp uh, enemy spawners and how to defeat them and things like this. Yep, let's go right for it. So the second part of our game tutorial would be the enemy spawner. In order to activate the enemy spawner what you would have to do, you have to go to this room, then settings, and then go down and activate allow creative tools better content. This has to be activated, otherwise the enemy spawner that we are using right now will not show up. Second thing you need to do, I would suggest you to build, of course this is not a fully fledged room setting, but I would suggest you to lay out your room setting before you put in enemies. Um, not everything, not every detail, but the main setting. Because what you see around here, this white thing, is something that's called the AI mesh that the enemies will interact with. They will see what's in there, see uh, use the walls and stuff for that. They will just interact in a better way if you have to set up right. I'm not sure if they cannot even move it, move around at all if you don't set this up. But this is something you need to do before spawning them in. And it's also in the main settings at the same place where the creative tools better content is. Just go down all the way. Then you have a thing that's called Bake Nav Mesh. You just press it. You can do this all the time again. But I would suggest you to set up your room first. Your layout of your dungeon and then get in the enemies as the i mean not as the last part you can do decoration and stuff after that but basically it's best to bake the mesh when you have set up your room. all right how do you spawn in an enemy you can see there's already some enemies here there's one in this corner one in this corner over here, and one, this is not really an enemy, but it will also act like an enemy. I will also have to destroy this in order to open the doors. You go to your palette, you search for spawner. Yep, there it is, spawner component. And then you have this kind of beacon that you can put somewhere. And you already see, you have now uh, like kind of a circuit palette, uh, circuit, kind of circuit board thing. And you have the enemy spawner is empty now. So what I want to do is I go to spawner component to this little thing here. And then I can select from various enemies that all have different values and do different stuff. Up to normal objects like plates. Well, let's put a run chuck here. So, once I select this, the thing will spawn if I trigger the thing. Here, the spawner component. Important to know in this is, if you once um, put some object in here and you want to change it, it works for some of the objects with configure and just clicking on it. Oh, yeah. But normally it does not work anymore. So like if you want to have a different object here in the same spawner, you would really have to delete this and put a new spawner component. So you, you have to think a little bit before you put these because you can only select it once and once it's selected and you go to the configure thing, It will not let you select the object anymore, but it will give you specific uh, settings for this enemy over here. So every enemy has different values and stuff. The most important thing is of course the health. You can change the health, how often you have to hit him. You can change his movement, its movement speed from one to 10. You can set if the health bar is visible. You can even, um, tell the enemy to attack right away. This is when you have combat activated. Or if you 
put it to disengaged and automatically engage combat behavior when finding targets. That means he's only attacking you when you are getting close to him. You can also turn this fully off, then he will, will do basically nothing. But you can still kill him. You can put him even to a team and you can even set a color. I say we can make him red instead of green. So, and as, as you can, will be able to see here, you can do this with any enemy and every enemy has different values that you can change and they are, they are pretty well explained so I'm not going through all the enemy types that we have. I don't even know what all they do. You will probably know better than me when you play these games more often. <laughs> yeah. But what is the process that is going on here? So what is happening in this room is when I enter the door, the doors will close behind me and the enemies will spawn. And when I defeated all the enemies, the doors will open again. How did I do this? I use the trigger volume when you enter and this trigger volume will trigger a piston to play. So the piston is down here, connected to a wall, basically to two walls because it's two doors. And once I enter, the doors will go up and then it will trigger the enemies to spawn. And that's where the spawner component, component comes in that I will explain in detail what everything does now. All right, here we go. So when you trigger this, this is triggered this time with a, um, yeah, with a trigger volume, but this can also be triggered, for example, by game start, if you want all the enemies to start right away when you want to fight them right, right away, when you start a game or something like this. So there's an amount to spawn, like you can spawn 100 of these guys, for example. Which wouldn't make much sense, but it would be overwhelming, but uh, a good amount would maybe you spawn 5 and you leave seconds between spawns, leave like 10 seconds between spawns. So every, five, uh, every 10 seconds, 1 will spawn until 5 are reached and then it will stop spawning. Um, you can use different spawn positions, which I would not recommend for now. This could save some of these guys here. If you have the same enemy and want it to spawn in different areas or randomly spawn somewhere, this could be something you can play with. But for this, you would need to have a lot of knowledge about Vector 3 and position chips and stuff like this. I wouldn't use that. If you have more enemies the same type, just put another spawner. Way easier. You have a reset down here, like if you trigger any event in here, what does it do? It just vanishes all the enemies that have spawned. Basically, it deletes all the enemies that have spawned already. You have a pass through, like something that will happen right when this happen when this starts. And then you can check which object object is spawned. This is also really complicated and you will not need it. Like this is for especially when you spawn more than one uh, object here. But what is important is these two things. You have an all object spawned. This means this is triggering something not right away but it will wait until all the five objects that you have are spawned and then trigger something. So for example some message like all goblins are spawned. This is not so much important, but this one is very important. That one we will use a lot. Uh, it's called all objects are destroyed. So this means it will trigger a signal once we destroyed all of these guys that spawned from there. So basically what we will do um, is, or what I'm doing here is, I'm closing the door with the uh, trigger volume uh, with the piston and once all objects are destroyed I will reset the door play a sound some yay sound or something like this and the doors opening again you've already seen this in the video before I will show it in the end again what I'm doing here um, maybe with uh, all the component components activated but now you may ask how, how do I do this if I have more than one for this I created 
Maybe there's another way, but I didn't find another way. I had to create a special chip. It's called Fire When All Done. You can find this in my maker room. That's called Rectorial. Rec.tutorial. Fire When All Done. Or you just search in the, in the shop. It's for free. You can just get it. It's called Fire When All Done. It's a very easy chip that basically I connected between the trigger volume player entered and these spawner components components so basically what what this does is um, I connected all the all objects destroyed outputs to some triggers here and this checks if all the triggers are all the things are triggered basically because it only triggers when you all destroy them then it will send out a send signal, which it tell, um, then will play a sound and hit your so score and reset the um, piston. And you can also set how many are connected. It's just to make the thing more easy. So it's not, it doesn't have to check if anything is connected here. Just tell him how many you're connected. And yeah. And then you can, don't forget, this is in going in between the spawners and the piston. Yeah, it's going in between the spawners and the piston. So it comes before setting up the piston or it can also be, go after the piston. Doesn't really matter too much. But important is that it goes before the spawner. So you can put the spawners all after this, like with the pass through and then just put the spawn here spawn here, spawn here, so it spa uh, spawns all at once, so it can have a delay, so it spawns them after one another. Yeah, and basically when all the enemies are defeated here, then it will play a sound effect, give you a score, I will explain later what we need this for. But for now, let's just show you what happens with the start a game and let's have the yeah let's have the components on even though you will not see much what is happening here because I have to fight <laughs> but when I enter you see it's triggering something doors closing enemies come at me so I destroyed them and what I can try if I destroy this normally not sure which one this is because I rearranged them a little bit. But normally these things should trigger if I destroy this. And one of these inputs should trigger, so let's see. Yeah, one input triggers, you can see that. This input triggered the last one and then because the others have already been triggered before, it opens the door. Yeah, this is how you set up the spawner component. Thank you guys for watching again. As always, like and subscribe and visit my extra room that I built to show off the things that you can do and to give you a little bit insight, especially when the circuits come up that you can just check out, make a selfie, post it, whatever. And uh, yeah, see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.